From the BBC Playhouse, we present Say Goodbye to the Lady, a play for radio by Laurie Wedlake. And this is the living room, I suppose. Yes. Well, Jan, what do you think of it? I think it's fine, dear. So old and a bit dark, perhaps, all that ivy around the windows, but oh, it has a charm of its own. Mm. Plenty of atmosphere about it, if you like that sort of atmosphere. Oh, it must be years since it really was a convent. The ground floor was used as a food office during the war. Oh, good heavens. That couldn't have left much scope for the principal then. But at least we've got the whole of the place back now. Of course, the plans for the new School of Art have already been approved. Anyway, darling, you've got your big opportunity. Frank Willison, RA, Principal of the Worcestershire School of Arts and Crafts. It's a good appointment, even if the present premises are a bit ancient. Next step, Royal Academy, huh? <laughs> oh, what a hope. Ah, but you know, this place has possibilities, Jan. I shall clear out all the junk first, and then... Jan, mm -hmm. imagine that beautiful dark oak staircase with... Uh, Which room for this chest, sir? Oh, now, let me see. Um, oh, dear, what did I pack in there, Frank? Oh, if it switches model railway, it'll have to go into the spare room. Or it might be the kitchen crockery. All the books Here, for Jerry, the... Load away, I'll steady it. Um, now, mind your fingers. Right. Uh, I'll just go and fetch some oddments. All right, dear. Mummy, I don't know yet, dear, and, and you can't have it even if it is. We're up to our eyes, But dear. I must have it now. I promised to show the lady. Oh, Jerry. Would you be an angel and put on a kettle for me, will you? I'll make a pot of tea if you like, Mum. And that would be nice. Oh, Frank. Oh, no, not on the mantelpiece. That clock lives on the sideboard. What lady, dear? Oh, the one down in the hall. Oh, Mummy, hurry up. Can I unpack it? Why that clock has to be relegated to the sideboard for eternity just because the house in Leeds had a mantelpiece too narrow for it, I can't think. Oh, it better go on the sideboard, dear. But everyone looks at a mantelpiece when they want to know the time. Oh, Frank. <laughs> all right, all right. What about the canteen of cutlery with best wishes from the students and staff? Sideboard again? Mm -hmm. The lady says there's no such thing as time. There'll be no such thing as Richard Willison if you don't stop getting in the way. Mm -hmm. She's right, though. There is no time, Richard. Then may I... Um... No time to unpack model railways. Now scoot and tell the lady she can see it tomorrow. Go on, shoo, shoo, shoo. Well, then can I have an ice cream? There's a shop down the road. Oh, all right, I suppose so. Here's a sixpence. Thanks. And make it last. Bye. Oh, Frank, dear, would you just move this tea chest? I can hear the furniture men coming up the stairs. Oh. I wonder what lady Richard meant. It's probably one of the teachers, darling. Mm. Oh, um, here we are. In here, Mum? Uh, yes. Uh, the piano on that wall there, please. Oh, and if this tea is next, I, I think it goes, um, let's see. Um, oh, over here, I think. I made a big pot of tea, Mum. Shall I bring it in? Oh, no. No, we'll come into the kitchen, Jerry. I expect the men would like some, too. Oh, there's a case of beer in the back of the van. They say they'd rather have that. Look, I'll show you fellows where it is, and you can help yourselves when you get to it. Hello, thank you very much. Did your little lad say something about a lady, Mum? Oh, heavenly tea. Oh, you've saved my life, Jerry. Yes, he's been talking to someone in the hall. I shouldn't let him be talking to her if I was you. Oh, Frank, here's your tea, dear. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, why ever not, Jerry? Because, because uh, I don't like her, Mum. She's been hanging around ever since I've been caretaking here, and that's 14 years I never did cotton on to her. Who is she? Ah, that's what I'd like to know. She don't do the place no good, I'll tell you that. With her long face and way of coming out just when you wasn't thinking of her. It sounds like that mysterious ghost. She is, too. Well, you won't believe me, I suppose. Got a fancy for children she has. My Molly's little girl, she talked to her. Near scared the daylights out of her and all. Well, if she's a ghost, she'll have to be laid with a liner. Oh, Jerry, I haven't had a chance to thank you properly before. And I'd like to say how very much we appreciate your kindness in moving out to stay with your daughter so that we can have this flat. Yes, rather. We couldn't have moved otherwise. Oh, Tim Nullin, glad to oblige. It changed for me and not like it was permanent. Oh, about six months should do it, I think. We should be able to sell the house in Leeds in that time and find a suitable one to buy here. Six months. Don't think much harm can come of her be then. Slow she is. No idea of time. Well, you're welcome. I hope it suits you and the lad. I'll go and give those men a prod and then I'll be off till tomorrow. And don't forget now. It'd be better if you didn't encourage that one in the hall. There's something very queer about her. I don't like it. What did he mean? <laughs> Search me. Well, now, darling, we'd better make a start. Mm. Uh, what a mess. 
I had forgotten what moving was like. Won't it be lovely when we're straight again? Richard, where are you? Down here, Mummy. Well, come along, dear. Tea time. All right, Mummy. I've got to go now. Tea, you know. Hurry up, Richard. Coming. What's for tea? Black currant jam and cream. Wash your hands, dear. Oh, goody. No bread? Of course, bread. Who are you talking to downstairs? The lady. I didn't see anyone. Mummy, you didn't look with your proper eyes. Oh, uh, Sunday eyes or, or something, hmm? Oh, well, these are the only ones I've got on me at the moment. But you are silly, Mummy. Well, my unproper eyes can see that you haven't washed, so now go on, off to the bathroom with you. Mummy, do you know I'm going to be a great artist when I grow up? Like Daddy? No, lots greater. Now, you look here, old boy. If you do as well as your father, you'll do all right. He's wonderful, you know. He's pretty good. I shall be better, though. Who's good? Uh, oh, uh, nobody. You, Daddy. I was telling Mummy I'm going to be a great artist. <laughs> Three cheers. Well, I can't say I've noticed any aptitude of you, Jack. <laughs> None. Can't draw a straight line. Takes after his mother, of course. <laughs> and you can't say better than that, young un. Well, you don't understand. The lady told me. Oh, good heavens, this lady. Do you know, we've been here a fortnight now, and you've been quoting her all the time, and I've never even caught sight of her yet. You weren't looking with your, your proper, proper eyes, eyes Daddy. Daddy. What is all this? <laughs> don't ask me. Uh, I don't think Richard ought to see so much of this mysterious lady, Frank. Hmm? I shall be a great painter and a great musician, too. I shall play the piano. Look, I'll show you and make pictures in sound like this. I shall paint them. Uh, here, uh, don't get black currant jam all over the keys. Go and wash your hands. Oh, wash your hands, wash your hands. That's all I hear all day long. Wash your hands. And shut the door when you leave the room. All right. Frank, I'm scared. Did you hear that, that music? Oh, it's a fluke. Just a fluke. It must have been. With that piece? But it took me ages to master that opening. The left hand's in a different rhythm to the right. Like this. Frank, it, it, it's uncanny. Now, wait a minute, dear. Granted it was no fluke, how do we know we haven't got a budding genius on our hands? But he would never practice. Not even with that marvellous teacher in need. It's a case of retarded development. It does happen. Children fail hopelessly at school for years, and then suddenly they're at the top of the form. Whoosh, like that. But Debussy, Frank. What a crush it's been. Yes. Is enrolment week always like this, Miss Lawley? Well, actually, no, Mr. Willison. I think I may say that we have broken all records this year. Who? Oh, I wonder why. Well, really, I think the young people have taken rather a fancy to you. <laughs> <laughs> Our retiring principal was, well... A bit elderly, you know, and most old-fashioned, too. Do you know he actually called Henry Moore a master of monstrosity? Oh, did he really? Yes. Well, now, um, how does the timetable for the evening classes work out? Let's see, 36 for life drawing, 26 for litho, 26 poster, 28 commercial, 51 for... Oh, what's this? 51 for modelling? Mm. Well, how can I sprint round 51 students in two hours? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Willison, but they were all so keen to enter your class. Then they can just unkeen themselves. I'll take 28, and that's too many, really. A uh, pottery. Where's the pottery page? Ah. Ah. Only five students. Right. Well, after the last 23 who enrolled for the modelling, the option of waiting for vacancies or joining the pottery class. Mm. And that's, um, that's Mrs. Bowley, isn't it? Ah, she's a fine craftswoman. Don't have her idol. A most unpopular class, Mr. Willison. The kill let them down on four different firings last year, and the students get discouraged. Hmm. Oh, we must do something about that kill. Miss Lawley, may I have some oil paints, please? Oh, hello, Danny. Hello, Richard. What do you want paints for? I've got the money for them. That wasn't the point. <laughs> oh, never mind. 
Go and paint the town red if you like. But let me see a spot of paint on any of the floors and I'll varnish you. <laughs> Dear me, I'm doing quite a trade today. And before the beginning of term, too. Now, what colours do you want, sir? There are some quite pretty ones here. The primaries, of course. Oh. And I'll have a viridian and a flake white. Oh, yes, a few brushes, too. Uh, brushes? Uh, well, you choose the ones you want from these. And what about oil boards? Oil boards? Haven't you any real canvas? Stretched, of course. Well, um, how about this? It's quite a good one. Mm, yes, that'll do. Now, let me see. That's one in nine and three and six, five shillings, eight and two, uh, eighteen and uh, five altogether. Uh, here you are, then. Oh, uh, thanks. Wait, wait, wait for the change. Oh, all right. Thanks. Bye. Well, uh, for a nine-year-old boy, he certainly knows a lot about it. Hmm. Except that he has no palette, oil, or turps. Well, actually, he has, Mr. Willison. He bought those two hours ago with a palette knife. Well, I'll be... <laughs> I wonder what kind of a mess he'll make of that good canvas. Oh. Yeah, is that the time? We've kept you rather late, Miss Lawley. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mr. Willison. I'm going home now, but I'll be in again tomorrow for the last of the enrolments. <laughs> uh, good night. Good night, Miss Lawley. And many thanks. Oh, oh, don't come to the door, Mr. Willison. I I'll see myself out. All right. Who's that in the hall? No one there, no? Heavens, I could have sworn. Ah, must be getting fanciful. What the... Shh. Richard? Again? Yes. Don't interrupt him. I've washed my hands. Uh, yes, well, <clears throat> yeah, I'm famished too. Uh, how about it, Jan? Yes, uh, yes, coming up. One macaroni cheese. What is it, Frank? What's happened to him? He even looks different. Uh, Jan, Jan, this is John Knightson. Child psychologist extraordinary. Good morning, Mr. Knightson. It was good of you to come so quickly. Oh, old school tie and all that, you know, Mrs. Willison. Not that uh, I'm a psychologist yet. Even an ordinary one seems to need more years than Methuselah before he can safely call himself that. Well, um, Frank's been telling me about Richard. Yes. Well, last night when we saw him at the piano, we, we were so upset that well, we felt we must do something. What do you think of it yourself? Well, I... I, I think he's haunted. Oh, come now, dear. Well, what else can it be? A, a normal boy, resistant to all attempts to teach him music. You know he never got past Cherry Ripe. Suddenly sitting down and playing like, well, like an international celebrity. Oh, no, I'm not exaggerating. This morning he, he threw off Chopin's revolutionary study as if it was a five-finger exercise. He'll be doing the Paganini variations next. I wish my young daughter showed such talent. But how can Richard play like that, Mr. Knightson? He, he's never even seen the music. And he looks, he looks quite old, quite adult when he's playing. It, it's, it's the lady. I'm sure it's the lady. Yes, uh, Frank has told me about this mystery woman. Have you seen her? No, never. I, I, I've looked till I'm dizzy. Frank? Well, <laughs> I rushed through the hall and I did think one time that someone was standing there. In the corner, you know, that, that rather dark angle on the left of the staircase. Mm. What did you see, exactly? Well, nothing, really. It, it was just just an impression. A face, I think, or, or a pale kind of mist, just about where a face would be. And, oh, and, and hands. A female? Definitely, yes. In something dark, perhaps. That would account for it not being visible against the panelling. A nun. It was a nun, wasn't it, Frank? The spirit of a nun. And Richard... She, she has some power over Richard. Uh, hold on, Mrs. Willison. Why not a real person? Uh, 
Was there anything to stop someone from slipping out as you went upstairs? Oh, no, of course not. The main door was open. Oh, no, no, it wasn't. I remember Miss Lawley slamming it as she left a few minutes before. Uh, back door exits or other rooms? Well, it's a bit difficult from the stairs in the time. It could have been done, though, I suppose. Mm. You know, I'm all against starting with any idea that there might be some supernatural agency in this business. Where is the boy now? He's in his room. I've called him a few times, but he says he's busy. I don't know what Atlas is painting. Frank said he had all the outfit, and I know he spent his pocket money yesterday. Well, I'd like to see what he's been doing. Very revealing, a child's artistic efforts. Well, I'll send him up for an ice cream. That'll shift him. Richard? Yes, Daddy? Do you want me? Uh, yeah. Well, here's a bob, youngster. Nip down and get yourself an ice cream. Oh, must I? Well, I thought you'd like one. You usually do. Of course. You're still seeing the child, aren't you? All right, then. Ah. Well, now, let's have a look. Good grief. Look at that. Mm, nice painting. But not by the child, surely. Looks more like your work, Frank. No, no. Quite honestly, I shall never do anything as good. This is... This is near perfection. Look, Jan, that, that moonlight. Yes. It's wonderful. And Richard did it. Richard and someone else. Something else. The uh, paint's still wet. Oh, the picture's not finished. <laughs> I wonder what my fellow academicians would think of it. They'd like it? <laughs> It'd only be sour grapes if they didn't. Let's get back to the living room. I can hear Richard coming. I, uh, I should like to have a chat with the boy, if, if you don't object. Alone, you mean? Hmm. Well, we're going to help Mrs. Birdie prepare the kiln, shall we, John? Yes, yes, all right. Oh, uh, Richard... Uh, this is your Uncle John. Come in and talk to him for a few moments while Daddy and I help Mrs. Bodie, will you? Hello, Richard. Hello. Uh, I've got a sort of um, question and answer game I'd, I'd like you to have a go at. Well, John's gone. Where's Richard? Getting another ice cream, rather reluctantly. Hmm. Frank. What did he say? That Richard's IQ was about average, except for the technicalities of music and painting, where he made John feel like a two-year-old. That there was only one explanation that sprang readily to mind, namely that we have in Richard the somewhat schizophrenic personality of genius. And if that's so, fear of Richard's abilities must be put out of our minds and the boy treated as a normal child. John's coming down for the weekend so he can have more time to study the problem. Schizo? Split personality? Yes, you don't like the sound of it, neither do I. But John assures me that to some extent all great creative artists show such a tendency. And as the alternative is even more unacceptable, I hope he's right. You mean, if it's the nun who is responsible for all this? Yes. Well, if she is, we'll move. We'll have her exorcised. We'll... No, 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 but... don't be so fierce. But what right has she to interfere with our boy? To turn him into a stranger, an older, adult stranger who knows and understands music and art better than we do. What right has she to talk to him so, so secretly in that dark corner and to shut us out and ignore us? God knows what right she has, Jan, or, or how she may have earned it. Perhaps if we knew, we'd not begrudge it to her. I do begrudge it. I grudge every moment of my child's life that's spent so far away from childhood. Every second of those times when he's a child no longer. All that will come to him soon enough, but just for now I want him as he was. As he should be. A troublesome, clattering, grubby angel. Half youth, half baby, but wholly ours. Jan, we'll move to an hotel. We can't afford that. Anyway, he'd only be back here haunting the place every moment. Shh. Here he comes. Well, there you are, Richard. And about time. It's past your bedtime. Oh, you're so stupid. Tea time, bedtime. There's no such thing. Yeah, so you've told us before. The lady says so, doesn't she? Yes. She knows all about time. Hmm. Uh, that painting in your room, Richard, did she tell you how to do that? Of course not. She's not at all clever that way. She just explained the other dimension to me, that's all. The other dimension? 
Time is a man-made limiting factor based on a fallacy. I'm showing that painting in 1970, and it'll be my first big success. But, but you've painted it now, Richard. I'm 21 years old when I paint it. That is, according to the human time fallacy. All our lives occur instantaneously. It was only a sort of childish proof of her theory as I started painting it. I'll clean off the canvas and leave it blank, because in the particular corner of the tapestry of life that you're looking at now, it actually is blank. You'll see it again when you're looking at the centre of the tapestry. I see. In other words, our eyes are not properly adjusted to take in life at a glance, as it were. You said it, chum. And now, as you're looking at what you so innocently call bedtime, I'll say good night. Well, you know, I got the distinct impression that I was being lectured. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he just forgot all about it and started being Richard again? I'll ring John again in the morning. Hmm. I wonder what common sense theory he'll find for this latest exposition. Frank, hmm? can, can, can you smell something? Oh, Lord. Mrs. Birdie's kiln. It'll have to have an outhouse all to itself. That wretched thing isn't safe in the old wing. Oh, where's Richard? Richard! Uh, Richard! What is it, Mummy? <coughs> Downstairs. <coughs> Downstairs and outside, you two. Richard, sprint for the door. Get it open. No. <coughs> no, no, stop, Frank. Look down oh, there. Uh, what is it? It's the nun. She's calling, Frank. <coughs> She's calling, Richard. <coughs> no, I can't. I can't go this way. Richard, would you come with me? We'll take the back stairs, Frank. Quickly, then. We'd better go round to the front. No, you stay here. Keep well away from the building. I don't like the look of it. I'll be back in a moment. <coughs> I'll just say goodbye to the lady, Mummy. No, Richard. Can't you see the fire? I must say goodbye to the lady. Richard! Richard, come back here! Richard! Richard! Now, steady on, madam. No use going in there. Oh, Richard! He went in! What on earth? I'll get close. No, sir, move back, please. You're getting in the but, way. But our little boy, he's in there. Right, lady. Little boy inside, sir. In you go, man. Make it snappy. This is burning like matchwood. Right, sir. Oh, Frank, they won't find it. I know they won't. Oh, darling, they will. They must. Surely they ought to know by now. Give them time, dear. We've only been waiting about, about half an hour. Seems like days. I've been thinking, Frank. I don't mind anything else. The odd way he's been behaving, the nun. None of it matters as long as... He, he will be, Jan. He'll be as fit as a flea in a few days, I'm sure of it. How can you be so sure? Well, his other dimension. If he really has seen his life as a whole, well, oh, there must be a life to see, mustn't there? Oh, yes. Which means that we accept his explanation. We must. Unless it's all been a dream, a sort of flight of fancy on our part now that the convent's burnt I, I could almost believe that i mean there won't even be the picture left no oh, you'll probably paint more as soon as he can i wonder do you remember he said goodbye to the lady if she let go ah oh, mr willison you and your wife can see him now oh, sister God. is he he's uh, fine just fine one or two small burns a sore chest and of course some shock oh. come with me Just have a word with him and leave him, will you? We shall keep him here for a few days. There's usually a tendency for the temperature to rise after burns. Now, don't be long. A good night's sleep will do wonders for him. And you, too. This is the ward. There he is. Hello, Richard. Feeling okay? Yes, thanks, Daddy. Little brute. Running into that fire. Her mother nearly died of shock. Well... Did you say goodbye to the lady? What lady? The lady in the hall, dear. 
fourth lady in the hall. Oh, Mummy, can I have some ice cream? And if I've got to stay here for a bit, can I have my... Your uh, paints and canvas? Paints? Well, I, I don't mind a few chalks. What would I want your old paints for? Well, uh, Daddy thought, as you are going to be an artist one day... Oh, am I? Well, Mummy, can I have my model railway, please? <laughs> well... Sister can hardly allow a railway track all over the bed. I'll tell you what, I'll get you a book about model railways. Yes, I suppose that'll have to do. Good night, Mummy. Good night, Daddy. Good night, lad. Good night, darling. Oh, and don't forget the ice cream. That was Say Goodbye to the Lady by Laurie Wedlake. Frank and Janet Willison were played by Michael Turner and Eva Stewart and their son Richard by Anthony Rees. Production for BBC Playhouse by Wynne Knowles.